Good afternoon and welcome to Talking Business. I'm Tracy Jones and this afternoon, um, ooh, this afternoon even, I'll get my words out straight, I'm joined in the studio by Adrian Dunn and Gary Bassett of A-Star Sports. Oh, welcome to Talking Business and welcome to the studio, Adrian and Gary. If you were listening before the news, you would have heard um, Gary's wife, Sharon, talking to the chatty children about A-Star Sports. Indeed. Um, now you're going to come on and talk about the, the business side of it. I haven't got any primary school children waiting to interview you, you'll be relieved to know. <laughs> I've just been dealing with 40 of them at Holiday Club, so it's all right. <laughs> so, Adrian, do you want to start off and tell us, um, from in your own words, what A-Star Sports is all about? Yeah, so I run A-Star Sports in the area, um, Ulster in Whitchurch, and it's providing sports for children aged 2 to 10 years. We provide 10 different sports, and we normally um, do the sports in like community centres or village halls, starting in the afternoons, so you know, from about half one, it'd be our first class, that'd be like two and a half year olds, and then every hour we move up an age group. And those classes, they run during term times, don't yes, they? Yes. So what's happening now then? So you, you said you just come from a hall with 40 or 50 children and what's that all yeah. about? Um, Adrian's actually been helping us because I, I run the, the Chester business as well as the national side of things. Um, we run a, a holiday club at the county offices um, where we have anywhere sort of between 10 kids some days up to 70 or 80 kids. Um, and obviously we usually keep to the ratio of about one to eight on average. Okay, uh, so do you get a holiday yourself at all? That, that is the holiday. Eight to <laughs> six, six with 50 kids. What, what's not holiday about that? <laughs> so d during normal term times, Adrian, you run these, these classes. Yeah. Um, and you run it on a franchise basis, don't you? Yes. So you, you, you uh, franchise um, yeah, with so, Gary and Sharon. Yeah, so Gary and Sharon also franchise the Chester, but also franchise all the base star sports. So um, what I was just researching on looking into franchises and I came across a star sports and started contacting Gary then and then went down that road yeah and and Gary then um, you're growing your franchises aren't you at the moment because yeah. when you came onto the show last year you were just at the start of the process of expanding and so Adrian you're part of that expansion process are you? yes yeah I uh, yeah took on my franchise in January uh, so so yeah started in January and started with my training and then in March I started doing my classes from March then uh, in different venues in Wrexham and Oscar Street. And you took over the Wrexham one because my children go to the one at St yeah. Margaret's there yeah so. And Mark runs that one yeah. Mark is brilliant. It I just really give well, Mark yeah. a name check. <laughs> Everybody loves him. All the mums love Mark. <laughs> He's in Cardiff he won't hear it to me. Oh. <laughs> I'll save it for another week then. But, um, and, and do you, I mean, you don't run that class then, so are there any classes that you personally run or do you manage a team of people that run all the classes for you? No, I run um, Overton class, uh, we run in um, Hulk class on a Monday, so Overton on the D class is on a Tuesday, and I'm opening a new class in Mark Wheel on a Wednesday, so, uh, and then we've got the Garden Village that Mark does yeah. on a Wednesday. I, I think they're great. My, my kids have been going since um, um, since you started in Rex, maybe just before that. I'm not sure um, when it was um, slightly different setup. Yeah. Um, but it is that range of sports I think is absolutely fantastic because they play games that I'd never even heard of, to be honest, um, and, and they get a chance to participate. So there's something for everyone, isn't there? And I think the new stuff, I mean, one of the most popular ones with the kids at the moment is dodgeball. Oh, they love it. And they love it. And the European Championships of dodgeball are actually taking place in Chester, in not this weekend, the weekend mm -hmm. after. And it's just growing so fast. And we've, we've got UK Dodgeball as a partner. Yeah. So we've got some of our kids are going to be ball boys and ball girls at the European Championships. Oh, that's amazing. We had one of the England team come to Holiday Club a couple of weeks ago. So, you know, new sports like that, things we never got to play when we were at school. No, I mean, I didn't know that throwing a ball at someone to hit them was actually <laughs> it's a great sport. <laughs> you love it. That's you just thought that was then. good parenting, did you? <laughs> <laughs> Run. Oh, I throw a ball at you. Yeah. So just give us your contact details then, Adrian. Yeah, so my mobile number is 0779 569 1417 or you can email me at adrian.dum at a-starsports.co.uk but um, I'm also on Facebook that I quite use quite regular so if you put A Star Sports Retsim it, it should show up on the search box really and just you know it's up to date so keep a look into there and uh, we'll see. Okay and you're looking to grow the areas ar around um, where you're offering the, your classes? Yes yeah? definitely yeah yeah um, always looking for new village halls community centres to start classes up in for the future you know going forward so 
Okay. Been, you know, if anyone's interested and they'd like to, a class in their area and they've got a venue, which would be quite useful, um, then they can get in touch with you. Yeah. Adrian.dunn yeah. at a-starsports.co.uk. Okay, Adrian, let's get back to you. So you've been um, relatively new um, owning the franchise for um, A Star yeah. Sports. What mm -hmm. were you doing before that? Did you have a, a career in sports? Uh, no, like before I ran my franchise, I, uh, I was a youth worker, so I worked over in crew connections as it was, the young people service, uh, and then rec more recently been working with young offenders, so I worked with young offenders in, in Cheshire West. Um, but before that I was doing farming, so I used to be a farmer, like milking cows. <laughs> and so, and how did you then decide that oh, I've, I've done farming, I've done youth work, right, I must um, run a sports class. How, how did that connection come along? Well, from an early age, I've always wanted to work for myself. So whatever I was doing at the time, I always looked as how could I do this for myself? So when I was farming from an early age, uh, you know, even from 14, I used to write, you know, draw a van and put, you know, Dunn's Agricultural Services <laughs> on or things like that and show me that. Yeah. So you didn't actually own a farm, you were you were doing no. farming services, yeah? Um, I just worked on a farm, yeah. yeah. Um, but, um, yeah, so I just worked on an arable farm, it was, when I was young. Yeah. Um, and then from that went to college. Um, but, um, yeah, so, sorry. No, so I was going to say, um, di you didn't move on to the van at that stage then? No, no I was only 40. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but you, you went to, then to work with um, young people? Yeah, so well, what happened, I was uh, milking cows in, in Cheshire, and uh, I was kind of a bit fed up with it, and I had an accident, a cow ran into <gasps> me one day. I had those cows. I, they're a bit scary, they're a bit too big for me, aren't they? <laughs> they look quite harmless in the field, don't they? But when you actually get close to them, they're, they're quite big. <laughs> yeah, they are big, and normally friendly, but this was a female cow, so oh. they're normally <laughs> better. But uh, it was out in the field, so I had nowhere to run, and it just ran right in the oh. side of my stomach. And they put me in hospital for a week, and I think that was the. Uh, <laughs> that was it. You didn't want to go out with cows again. Uh, <laughs> was, yeah, get me looking, into an office now. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. So it's just looking for something different. But yeah. each bit, when I've moved from farming to youth work to youth work to franchise, I've always sat down and said, "How can I make this happen?" So yeah. you know, when I wanted to move out of farming, it was other jobs needed GCSEs, English, and maths. So. I didn't have that, so I went back to night school. I was 25, so went and done my maths again to yeah. give me a GCSE to do for youth work. So when I go into youth work, um, it, it started off with 18 hours to start. With. No, sorry, it was six hours. So I was doing six, 65 hours farming and then finishing at night, uh, washing, you know, having a wash, having a shower, and going back out to do the two nights youth work. Wow. So. Um, so for my youth work, it started off doing more hours and more hours, and then. And you slowly reduced the farming hours. Yeah, yeah. So what happened was, I was doing nine hours, and um, I, I, I kind of knew if I was making myself more available, I'll get more hours on my youth work. And um, so what I did, I left my farming and went self-employed farming, so I can decide what hours to do myself. Yeah. So it be do all morning milking so from five o'clock to ten o'clock but then that left me the rest of the day to do this youth work then you see wow. so okay so you started at work at five and then started another day's work yeah, after yeah. That. so yeah. i'll come home and then you know just uh, go out and do the youth work really because um the future in that was like in mvq level three and i knew if i had that i could do my degree in youth work so it, it was a and, and i knew if i made myself available for work in youth work to be more hours that came yeah and that's how it, and then you know before i'd done my um degree i was doing 42 hours in youth work and no hours in farming yeah so you, you went from having no qualifications to getting a degree yeah yeah and that was because that you decided that's what you wanted to do yeah. you worked out how you needed to get there yeah oh hats off to you adrian <laughs> well done so now are you working full-time for a star sports um, not in, I've bought the franchise, so I do the franchise. Yeah. What I've done, I've still kept my part-time job in youth offending, so I'm still doing youth offending for two days, and then everything else, I do the A-star sports work. You never want to just do things by halves, <laughs> are you? <laughs> so there's the, I, I like that. I mean, do, does that feel like the comfortable way for you to do it? You, you're sort of easing yourself out of one into another? Yeah, yeah, definitely, and it, and it is. Because you know, starting a new business, it just takes time, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, so it's just 
you know, when I'm still working at Youth Offending, my mortgage is still getting paid, but I've still got time to grow Daystar Sports business. And the age groups that you're working with are slightly younger at Daystar Sports. Yeah, yeah. so the age group at Youth Offending is from 10 to 18. So <laughs> Daystar Sports <laughs> is 2 to 10, right? Yeah. You get the whole spectrum there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're listening to Talking Business on Callan FM. If you'd like to be a guest on the show in the future, or if you have any news stories or business-related events that you'd like to share, then do get in touch. You can email info at callanfm.com, telephone 01978 293 393, or go and leave a message on the Facebook page, which is Talking Business Callan FM. Adrian, so mm -hmm. we've been talking about um, where you've been, but let's get to this point at where you decided you were going to yeah. um, go into business and, and, and buy a franchise. At what point did you go, all right, it's a franchise for me, and then what did you do to find out which franchise was right for you? Yeah, it goes a lot because even when I was farming, I was looking like, how can I work for myself? And then, you know, it's always green for, you know, a franchise. A franchise always appealed to me because of that, the model set up and yeah. it's that support, the ongoing support. And um, so when I started uh, wanting to go into franchise for my youth work, it was just looking at what's out there. So I wanted something I enjoyed doing and something I could do. So it was children. So when I was searching franchises, you know, what franchise can work with children? A lot of sport ones was coming up. So I looked at a few different sports franchises uh, and just researched into that, you see. So it was like this franchise out there, it's called Premier, uh, there's PT Sports. So, you know, PT Sports had a meeting with Premier, I had phone conversations with, uh, and I was just looking more and then I used I was looking at the British Franchise Association, which yeah. is a website if you look into franchises as um, ethics, you know, code of ethics and a lot of information. There's a lot on. of stuff on there, isn't there? Yeah, yeah, there's loads, yeah. It's probably one of the first places to go if you look into franchises. And, and A-Star Sports was on, so I started researching, looking into A-Star Sports. And Okay, and, and Gary, you, you were at the point then where you were really looking to grow your network, weren't you? So yeah, I mean, we, we quite deliberately chose to make sure we went down the British Franchise Association route because we knew our product worked for parents and we'd won the awards with parents and things like that for what we deliver. But we wanted to show that the business side of things worked as well. So the BFA obviously has a certain due diligence process that we had to go through to, to meet their criteria, down to them approving our agreements and contracts and things. Um, so we wanted to show that that side of our business, that the business model worked as well. Um, and the BFA gave us that kite mark, for want of a better way of putting it. Um, and we've, we've also followed other, other things to try and make sure we've shown as a credible business. And we've had a good year since we last spoke to you, picked up a number of national awards against some of the big yeah. boys as well. You know, some of the big franchises like Starbucks and McDonald's, we beat some awards and things like that, which is That's for a small business yeah. is pretty good. Um, and we, we think we've got a, a little bit of different. I mean, like Adrian said, he when he came to us, um, he'd sort of looked at the market and there are a couple of other sports franchises out there, but they all predominantly deal with the schools market. And that's where we believe we're quite different. We're very much to the families, to the communities and build an ongoing relationship with the kids. So we like to think we found a little way of being different to the market, but also we found the, the credible business model that's, that meets all the rubber stamps of the BFA and well, we've, you know, the Startups 100 liked us, the Guardian liked us. Uh, Adrian Dunn liked you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and a couple of others coming on board soon as yeah. well. So, so when, when you were going through this process of choosing, did you use a checklist or something from the BFA to... Yeah, to did, yeah there's a checklist on the BFA, so um, just look through that. Um, you know, when you look at franchises, you have uh, affiliation with BFA, you know, a British Franchise Association. So it, it does mean that the franchise has followed the, the BFA ethics and, yeah. or, you know. So uh, you feel quite comfortable with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, did you go to any of the exhibitions? There's normally a couple of exhibitions every year with franchises or because you knew you wanted to go and work with children that you got your area narrowed down quite a bit before? Yeah, um, I did have a ticket to go to the franchise exhibition in Birmingham, but I never went. <laughs> I think I was doing something that day. I forgot. <laughs> You're was, watching your hair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was free tickets I had, yeah. so uh, it, you know. Um, and I but I guess you'd done your research pretty well by then, and you know you'd narrowed it down, hadn't you? Yeah, it's it's looking at what you want to do really. So, like Gary said, you know, the franchises work with after schools, so. You're still dealing with schools, aren't you? Yeah. So the schools are deciding if you want your next week or not. 
um, whereas the A-Star Sports model, you're working in village halls, community halls, so you can decide, you know, I'll, you know, you want that hall, and you can hire that hall out, so the parents and children come to you then for yeah. classes, really. Um, so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you, you were talking about her party, and I, I've um, got to say, I've been to a few parties with my children um, that have been run by um, Mark, who um, yeah. runs one of your classes, and I'm always really impressed with how well run they are and how engaging um, it is, but, and how many of the children join in. Um, so, is there a formula to running parties? Is, there, is this something that you had to learn, Adrian? Uh, no, yeah, there's no one, yeah, you know, we've done the training, <laughs> I've been to a few parties with Gary, so, you know, watching what Gary does. Um, but I think at the start of the party, being that person that it's my room or my yeah. hall, so to speak. So when the, the children come in, they know what's going to happen. They know your name, and you just ask their names, and you know you just introduce them what's going to happen. You know, and that that knowing their name that has been um, one of the biggest things that parents that I've been talking to are really impressed with, is that uh, I thought it was just Mark, but um, you, you told me while we were listening to that track that all of you make a point of learning all of the children's names, and it's amazing that you know there could be twenty, thirty children there and you're able to say you know and it comes across as all of them there might be one or two that you don't remember but the impression is you know everybody's name i'm i, I can sort of see that that's nice but what are the reasons for doing that from your point of view and um, for the children uh, it makes it personal for them so that you've learned you know you took the time out to learn their names and also if you're playing the parachute game and someone's messing about misbehaving on the other side to put a name yeah. on that child to make them listen and sit on their bottom it's easy to say oi uh, are you there <laughs> yeah. it just makes it easier and, yeah. and getting them all involved you see um and there is a showing off factor to it really. <laughs> like you said it's what parents notice yeah. we, you know we know if you go to parties and you can reel off sit them all at the start line five minutes after they've all arrived and say right what's your name jonathan what's your name sarah what's your name <laughs> it's showing off but it kind of makes everyone yeah. relax and you're you're controlling the room and the parents know they can calm down and, and get they on with whatever they you. want yeah. and the kids are having a ball and tell you you just said my name and it's yeah it's part of the fun mm. uh, it's it's really it is impressive and it, it's well done actually because <laughs> it you. is the thing that most parents uh, speak uh, um we talk about so um running parties for people is another one of the services that you offer yeah. then yeah um so you've got your holiday club you've got your your classes after school and parties is there anything else <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, but I do go into nurseries or, or school, right, yeah. you see, so I've done a couple of nurseries and or parent and toddler classes. Like a demonstration? Yeah, so the parent and toddler um, classes, you've got the parents there, so I, I go in and do some taster sessions and at least the parents are watching yeah. and, you know, they get, and they see their child um, getting involved with the games and, you know, having fun and then, you know, they might ask yeah. about classes. And, and I know that you've, you've run the... Um, the sports day at Garden Village um, Nursery, um, a, a play group, a at couple market, of years yeah. running market. Um, and, you know, they were brilliant because the, the little ones saw that their older children, um, the brothers and sisters, were doing sports day at school. So they did one at play group as well. And uh, Mark, Mark was fantastic with that as well. And that's the first time I noticed that he knew everybody's name. It's like, wow. And even the play group leaders were impressed with that. Yeah. Because so. <laughs> I was doing um, a fair at Victoria Primary School and uh, a couple of the children, because I've been going into Victoria on a, uh, on a Monday morning, a couple of children go, there's Adrian, there's Adrian. <laughs> it's like, and then they had to come out, I wanted to go and see Adrian, so they're coming <laughs> over and they're like, how does he know you? Like That's a rock star. <laughs> it's, it's one direction factor. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's difficult when you go into schools though, you can kind of conscious the teachers are getting a distraction as you walk through the corridor. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's you. <laughs> so let, let's talk about your own inspiration then. So you, you've... You, you've obviously uh, had a an intention to work in a certain area, but yeah. um, I mean, working with children mm -hmm. and, 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 and young people. But what is it that inspired you to go down that route, or what is it that inspires you in life in general? I think at different stages of my life, different people have inspired me. So what I was doing at that time, you know, when I was younger, working on my farms, and the farmer's son and my farmer, you know, introduced me to you know doing new things like whether it's learning how to drive a tractor and bale and hay or you know telling me to go to agricultural college um you know that was you know that was good at the time uh, and then there's other facts you know like you know my 
parents, no, my dad hasn't worked since I was 10, so that's kind of inspired me to, I don't want, you know, I want to be... Do the opposite. Yeah, 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 you know, just at the time as it was, but, um, because it was, you know, difficult times. Yeah. But that's kind of inspired me to, I don't want to, you know, I, I want to be working, I want to be working. I think that's why, you know, doing a 70 hours farm. <laughs> that's and why you've got two <laughs> jobs on the go at any one time, <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, but also my next door neighbour, um, well he's moved now, so not because of me though. <laughs> Uh, he had a franchise and a Oh, he's moved to a bigger house and that. <laughs> he's made his money and he's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he has. Um, he had a different franchise, but also talking to him and, and seeing how it's gone from having you know, two big um, agents, he does, he puts for sale boards up, so seeing how he has two estate agents to, you know, 50 estate yeah. agents, you know, and, you know, talking to him each day, he's like, oh, yeah. it's gone from little to really big now. I suppose it's quite nice as well, isn't it? You're looking into a franchise and you actually see it happening in, in reality rather than just reading the case histories, the case studies. You, you actually see that it is possible for real, for a real person. Yeah, because, you know, with Gary and Sharon running Chester, I was able to see, you know, Chester, you know, where the areas they were doing my classes in, but also, you know, Gary you know, invited me to have a look at the classes and come and have a look at holiday clubs. So it was quite open book, really, yeah. to go and have a look. Um, because you know franchise shouldn't really hide anything you know you should be able to and to be honest that's actually part of the selection process for us because they could be the best coach in the world but if they can't engage the kids yeah they nothing's going to work so actually we want prospective franchisees to come and join in for six classes on the trot and see that yeah it might sound glamorous but moving pianos and 50 chairs in a village hall out of the way that's not all glamour. Yeah. Um, and then six hours of kids, you know, and whether you can cope with it and command the room for that period of time, it, that's the reality. Come and come and have a look, because we don't want people who are going to sort of turn around and say, actually, that's not what I thought. I thought I'd be Sir Alex Ferguson, you know, not <laughs> you know, not CBBS, you know. And we're, we're probably somewhere in the middle, cross between the two. Um, yeah, that works. <laughs> but I suppose it's quite important for you, though, Gary, as well, isn't it, to get the right people at owning your franchises because it's it's your brand. Isn't yeah, it? So it, you... it, it's the brand. And while we don't want clones, you know, we're not going to go down the sort of Americanized franchise route of this is how you say hello. Um, we're all going to be doing similar things, but you use your own personality. Kids will see through if it's not your own yeah. personality. So we want people with a personality who can engage the kids. <laughs> I was going to say the Pied Piper factor. I shouldn't be the end of that story, <laughs> but it's that sort of thing. The, the ones who can really get the kids on yeah. board, wanting to do something. It doesn't matter what it is initially, but they, that they can have that engagement. The rest we can kind of help them learn. Yeah, and, and in, inviting them in to actually take part in a class is quite important because that sort of engagement, yeah. that ability to engage your kids, it's not on paper, is it? You no, no, it's... Okay, you, probably is that you've got it or you haven't yeah. to the to the extent we need it um and also i think it will help people self-select because a lot of people will know <laughs> if they come and do six hours of classes with me or with it, whoever they'll kind of think <laughs> oh my word that's <laughs> not not what i was thinking it was going to be so it, it's an important factor so the ones that are reaching for the paracetamol or the gin yeah. bottle on the way out but you know it, it's important and also obviously we the chester business is one of the showcase businesses of, of what yeah. we've got and you know we also want to show this is the sort of scale you know you build the business to what you want mm -hmm. i mean the chester business we run most of the time anywhere up to 70 classes a week uh, last year we ran 250 birthday parties which we can only do at weekends so that's quite a few that's quite a lot isn't um, it? and then you know we're averaging uh sort of 40 to 50 kids in each session which is a half day at holiday club for sort of 50 odd days of the year so that's quite a big business for the type of yeah. thing we are but you don't have to go down that route you can go more down the small model where you're running 20 or 30 classes doing maybe 50 parties a year and doing three or four weeks of holiday activity yeah. and that that works as a business model as well but where are mm. you heading with it adrian are you, are you thinking big are you, yeah you middle? Well, yeah because i'm um, Fairly young, I say. <laughs> yeah. All right, <laughs> younger than me. Yeah, but thirty-three, um, and so yeah, I do want to build up. You know, I want to have my own, you know, own coaches, yeah. um, doing their own venues, and and you know, I cover Whitchurch and Oster Street, so it'd be handy to you know have someone that lives close around Whitchurch can do you know classes around Whitchurch and and just around my area really. Um, so yeah, definitely, you know, looking to have more coaches, more venues, more classes, and then hopefully from the classes that builds from the parties, you know, birthday parties, and then, you know, looking to have a holiday club 
in, in the summers and Easter. Uh, and, and Gary, how many areas have you got at the moment? The, the plan was to be by 12 by the end of this year, but we'll, we've got Colchester, Cheltenham and uh, Chorley all starting in September, which will take us to 15 Brilliant. Uh, before before the end of the year. Yeah, so we see. should be ahead of the game before yeah. the end of this year. You've blasted through your target then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. now the next one's 24 by the end of next year, so we'll see how we go. <laughs> OK. With an ultimate 240, so... We'll that's, book you in for this time next year then for an update. <laughs> okay, pressure. No pressure, right, <laughs> <is it? laughs> it's to You're listening to Talking Business on Callan FM. And I'm talking to Adrian Dunn and Gary Bassett of A-Star Sports. So, Adrian, let's talk yeah. challenges. What, what sort of challenges are you facing or did you face when you were setting up in, in this franchise business? I think the main challenge is deciding that you're going to go from employed work to self-employed work is the biggest challenge to, to make that decision really um, and then but once you make that decision then it's put the finances together to yeah. make sure you can buy the franchise but also have money to last you yeah. until you start making an income from it because so you have to have a bit of a period where it, y your own finance tied you over yeah because one of the things I say to friends that it, it was easy to make money everyone would be doing it they? you know everyone yeah. would just think oh i don't like my job i'm going to do this it's it, 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 it's a lot of hard work involved yeah. to get it doesn't it suit everybody either does it no um you know because i know some of the people i spoke to said why would you leave employed work to go self-employed yeah. and i thought well that's probably why i'm doing it and you're yeah. not you know it's I mean, you, you said earlier on that you always wanted to be your own boss so, and, and that came from, from quite a young age, didn't it? So can, do you know what it is that, that sums up why you want to be self-employed? I don't know. I think I'm easy to work with, so it's not that. <laughs> it's like, yeah, um, That's it. You, you're easy to work with, so you work with yourself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I think, um, I don't know why I wanted to be self-employed, but it is something I want to do. But I think working with public sector can be challenging because you know the budget cuts yeah. a lot of the times um, so that can that's a, a very diplomatic uh, way to put it isn't it challenging yes. <laughs> yeah yeah okay, very quiet <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and and also decisions you know when you're self-employed you make those own decisions you know if something's not working you can decide right I'm not doing that you know or yeah. I can change that for next time but if you're working in a company you, you know there's a lot of routes to go down to yeah. think Know, this is not working can we change this system you like to be the master of your own destiny <laughs> is that a bit too strong a way to put it i think so yeah, yeah. <laughs> um but um yeah i don't know it's a bit strong i suppose but with a franchise at least you've got that support that yeah. you know you can you know you know, you know speak to and say you know or, or um swap ideas or, or you know say i tried this and you know, what went wrong and you know, Gary could say, well, you know, maybe we try that next time. Yeah. Or, or and and other benefits that you get from being part of a franchise like A Star Sports is that they, you know, they, you you do the marketing. I take it a large uh, part of the national yeah, sort of brand. Sort of all the brand yeah. development and a lot of the PR work, and and we set up some of the infrastructure because obviously social media, particularly with kids' activities, parents talk yeah. and. That, you know that invisible marketing is now more and more powerful so we set up a lot of the structure so like Adrian was saying he's got a, a Wrexham Facebook page there's a national one but we have the sort of network and the basic structure yeah. and the training on how to use those we'll do the national Twitter side of things and we'll work on a lot of the national partnerships with governing bodies and partners and like we had Helen Richardson the bronze medalist from the Olympic London 2012 come along to Holy Club last year she's one of our ambassadors we had one of the England dodgeball players come along you know they're ambassadors so we do that on a national yeah. basis all things to try and show we're doing the right things we keep developing the program as well yeah. so it, all of that in place to try and help and it helps with the credibility of you know if yeah. you were doing this all on your own that your own personal credibility would be fine but get, yeah. you know getting being part of a wow. nationally recognized i think just the working capital agent is talking about the time it takes yeah. if he had to sit research and write the four or five hundred lesson plans that it takes to take a kid from yeah. two to ten would actually take him yeah, he wouldn't months have time to years. run a class no, yeah. well, that's it i think with um, a franchise it'll get you to where you need to be a lot faster than doing it yourself um, yeah. is, is where i came from i think i think a lot of the statistics show that while franchises don't always have the best pr actually all the government statistics and everyone says generally fr franchises are far less likely to fail than someone setting up yeah. on their own however there are good and bad franchises yeah. and Not all franchises. We'd, we'd like to we'd like to think <laughs> we're one of the good ones and we'd say do your homework because we think we can tick all the boxes yeah um and that's a, a 
yeah, think Asian yeah. would probably agree. You know, look around, ask lots of questions, check what other franchises are saying about them, and do do the BFA. It's, you know, it's it's not t- totally everything, but it, you know, they do check through. There's due diligence there, and they will give you courses on how to assess a potential franchise or. I think they even have a list of 50 questions to ask them. Yeah. He's probably asked me 47 of them. But <laughs> I don't know if he's asked all Do of them. Do you want to ask him the other three live <laughs> on there? <then? laughs> so, I mean, if you were going to recommend to somebody to do a franchise, and you've already given a lot of advice, but is there anything else that you would like to say to somebody who's perhaps thinking of going down a similar route? Yeah, it's, it's definitely do your research. You know, it's not a rushed idea. It's not like you're going to choose it within a month. You know, I think I started researching properly the January um, 2011 and I didn't start to January 2012 and that was you know every spare time I was looking into different franchises until I got to, to Gary I think when I found A-Star Sports I was kind of ready you know I'd done all the yeah. research it, and A-Star Sports kind of just fell into my pri- into place into my research uh, <laughs> So right time, right place. Yeah, you, yeah, and you'd, you'd put your homework in and didn't rush. You know, so that, that that's yeah, yeah, wise yeah, advice. Uh, yeah, because there's a lot. You know, there's you, know, you said about challenges. It's to rush it and it didn't go right. It's you know, you ought to make sure it's the right decision. Yeah. Really. Um, you can waste a lot of money if you, if you get that wrong, can't you? Yeah. Yeah. And I'd like to think that we try and push people to ask a lot of those questions and force them through the numbers. And yeah, yeah what are you going to live on for these months and things like that? And I think if if you're talking to a franchise whether it's us or a totally different industry sector, you should be expecting certain bits of information from them. They should be pushing you to ask these questions yeah. and make sure you're thinking about these things. If they're not, I would have the alarm bells ringing. Yeah, um, either that they would not thought of them themselves. Yeah, yeah. give or. it be the kindest to answer. Yeah, or, or <laughs> yeah. yeah. So yeah. Gary, from looking from the other point of view, then if somebody's got a business and they think, you know what, I could take this nationwide and I'd, I would consider franchising it, where do they start? Um, I mean, I think we, we started naturally with the perspective of, OK, if we're going to do this, we have to assume we are going to go national ultimately. And everything we do has to be geared around how can we do this if we have 240. We worked with a, a territory mapping company to to, des- to map out the whole country in terms of what would be viable businesses. Yeah. So we know there are 240 potential Adrians. <laughs> want a better way of putting it um, so we had to sort of say okay we're now going to design everything as though there are 240 will this work can we do this if there are yeah. 240 people okay. wanting xyz so for if you only have five territories it's over engineered but it's yeah. looking to the future yeah again. we've tried to build it that way uh, systematically and we've tried to do you know I've, I've been lucky and worked for a lot of ethical companies in, in my past the likes of lego johnson and johnson who are all probably pretty good at on that scale of things so I probably had that ingrained in me, but also seen how you can make business work properly. And I think ultimately the good guys tend to win. So if you do it properly, I think the just desserts will come. <laughs> yeah. Um, and they're coming. Fingers crossed. Yeah. <laughs> oh, platforms there. <laughs> so um, just give us the contact details for your classes and, and the areas that you cover again, Adrian. Yes. Yeah, so starting for September, we've got um, a halt on a Monday. Uh, Overton on a Tuesday, Garden Village in Wrexham on a Wednesday, and uh, Markery on a Wednesday. They're going to be starting in September. And then I've got two venues booked for later in the year. So Thursday would be Ellesmere, and on a Friday be Tilston Memorial Hall on a Friday. So if you want to book your child onto place on your on a space for your child, it's, uh, you can contact me on 0779 569 1417 or Facebook me or email me. Okay, and your email is adrian.dunn at a-starsports.co.uk. Yeah. And That's just right. to get the Chester plug in, we also, yeah. just for the way the boundaries are, we have Gresford, which is kind of Rexham, yeah, yeah. on a Monday yeah. as well. Okay. <laughs> and um, Gary, if anybody's interested in learning more about franchising yeah. and, and, and becoming part of your um, group, what do they have to do? Um, I mean, I would suggest, firstly, have a real good look around our website, particularly go on to the Becoming a Franchisee. There's a couple of videos, all sorts of things, and go on to the BFA website. But also, you can give me a call, drop me an email, various ways on the website to get in touch with me and I'm quite happy to, to chat and if if you're obviously listening to this you're probably more local and we can have a coffee and uh, and work through it. Um, my number is 077 96 190 169 and pretty much anything through the website will ultimately get to me as well. Okay <laughs> thank you. Go I on Adrian. Say, what I would say was um, uh, 
Wrexham Council helped me a lot. You know, there's a business side to their council. Oh, me, there so. is, yeah. <laughs> did, have you, did you speak to Gareth at Business Line as well? Uh, I did speak to Gareth. Uh, one of the people who helped me because I got a bit of a grant was John Jarvis. Oh, right. We'll so put a plug in for them. Yeah, um, the, the council and, and the library, absolutely fantastic business support. Thank you for mentioning them. <laughs> Okay, well, I'll book you in for this time next year to see how much you've both grown. That's and, good. And, uh, you're 24, <laughs> but yeah, not good. <laughs> we saw your chocolate delivery, Tracy. <laughs> yes, thank you to Carol from Box Chop for delivering my supplies of uh, filthy hot chocolate for this weekend's camping. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm in next week with um, SEO professor Brett Tudor. But thank you to Adrian and thank you to Gary.